Hi, I'm Jim Jones with Emerson. In this video, I'm going to show you how to mount the Fisher 3582 pneumatic positioner on this Fisher 657 size 40i direct acting actuator. The actuator has already been mounted on this Fisher valve. The bench set of the actuator and the stroke of the entire assembly has already been properly adjusted. Of course, we want to always make sure we review and are familiar with all of the safety precautions and procedures found in the instruction manual for the 3582 positioner. Our first step will be to attach the connector arm to the stem connector. That's rather easy on this direct acting actuator. But if you're working on a reverse acting actuator for safety, make sure you add air to get the plug up off the seat to relieve the pressure on the stem connector before you loosen the bolts. It's best to add enough air to push the diaphragm to the top of the case. Of course, make sure you then put the stem connector back on in the same place as before. One little trick here is to make sure the connector arm is as far to the left as possible without touching the yoke of the actuator. This will give us a little more space between the arm and the 3582 positioner. Now, I've already attached the mounting plate onto the positioner. Now we're ready to mount it to the actuator. Which set of holes we use here in the mounting plate is critical. In the instruction manual, it tells me that for this actuator, a Fisher 657 size 40i actuator, I must use hole set number two. While I'm bolting on the positioner, it's a good time to remind you that if you're installing a brand new 3582 positioner, make sure you take off the cover and remove the styrofoam block we put in there for shipping. Okay, step one was to attach the connector arm. Step two was to mount the positioner on the actuator. Step three now is to move the actuator to the middle of its stroke. Just get it as close as you can by sight. Step four, position the rotary shaft arm to be parallel to the connector arm. We can double check that by making sure the vertical marks on the rotary shaft arm line up with the marks on the side of the positioner case. Step five, insert the travel pin in the slot of the rotary shaft arm above the mark for the rated valve travel and tighten the cap screw. Two things are important in the placement of this travel pin. First, we want it in the slot over the mark that indicates the rated travel of the valve. In this case, our valve has a one and a half inch stroke, so we'll put the pin over the mark for that travel. Secondly, we want to make sure the pin is perpendicular to the connector arm. Finally, we just tighten up the travel pin cap nut to hold everything in place. So the Fisher 3582 positioner is mounted in just five easy steps. First, attach the connector arm to the actuator. Second, mount the positioner onto the actuator. Third, stroke the actuator to mid-travel. Fourth, position the rotary shaft arm to be parallel to the connector arm. And finally, insert the travel pin in the slot of the rotary shaft arm above the mark for the rated valve travel. In this video, I'm going to show you what you may need to do before you calibrate this Fisher 3582 pneumatic positioner. Okay, the positioner has already been properly mounted onto this Fisher 657 size 40i direct acting actuator. We've hooked up the air supply and made sure the regulator is set to the proper pressure, in this case, 20 PSI. And we've installed the airline from the positioner to the actuator. So let's first identify the components of the positioner that we'll be working with. The D-shaped beam here is the summing beam and is the component this flapper assembly moves around on. Notice the summing beam is labeled direct over here and reverse over here. The cam, which is attached to the rotary shaft feedback arm, is behind the summing beam down here at the bottom. This cam, labeled A, is the linear cam. Make sure the arrow on the cam points in the direction of actuator stem travel. On this direct acting actuator, increasing diaphragm pressure drives the stem down, so the arrow must point down. The nozzle is located right here. 
The bellows is behind the beam and in the upper right corner. There are two pins and one screw that we will adjust in this initial setup procedure. One pin is directly above the nozzle and it's called the beam pivot pin. The other pin is located just in front of the bellows and is called the bellows pivot pin. The screw we will adjust is on the flapper assembly. We want to make sure that the beam is totally perpendicular to the nozzle so the flapper approaches the nozzle squarely. To do that, we may need to do a beam alignment. Now, if you have a brand new 3582 positioner, you shouldn't need to do this beam alignment procedure, but it doesn't hurt to check it. Commonly, you will need to check beam alignment if the positioner has been rebuilt and any components replaced. If the positioner is to be split ranged or the positioner is acting in a non-standard way. Step one is to loosen the lock nut around the nozzle. Turn the nozzle in all the way and then back it out four complete turns. Step two, increase the input signal to the middle of the input range. In other words, on a 3 to 15 PSI input, take the pressure to 9 PSI. Step three, move the flapper assembly to place it over the cam down here at position zero. Now, check the rotary shaft arm. If the index marks on the arm are not aligned with the ones on the case, adjust the follower assembly screw until the marks are aligned. When they are parallel, tighten the lock nut on this assembly. This will be the only time we will need to adjust this screw. Now, in step four, we move the flapper assembly to the number 10 on the direct side of the beam. Check the feedback arms. If they are not parallel, adjust the bellows pin using an eighth inch wrench until they are. Go to the reverse side and check the arms again. If they are not parallel, adjust the beam pivot pin above the nozzle. You may need to repeat this direct 10, reverse 10 procedure a few times until there is no movement in the arms and they stay parallel regardless of where the flapper assembly is placed. If the arms don't move when the flapper assembly is on either side of the summing beam, beam alignment is complete. Just make sure all the lock nuts are tightened. The only thing left to do now is to zero and span the positioner. So, the first part of calibrating a Fisher 3582 positioner is making sure the beam is aligned with the nozzle. And we can do that in just four easy steps. First, turn the nozzle all the way in and then out four complete turns. Next, set the input signal to the middle of its range. Then move the flapper assembly over the cam and adjust the flapper assembly screw to align the feedback arms. Step four is to move the flapper assembly from direct 10 and then to reverse 10 to align those arms using both the bellows pin and the beam pivot pin. Finally, when you're all done, tighten up the lock nuts and that's it. So now we're ready to set zero and span. The zero adjustment is done with the nozzle and the span is adjusted by moving the flapper assembly along the summing beam. We of course have our air supply plumbed to the positioner and can see on the supply gauge the regulator is set to, in this case, 20 PSI. To get started, we'll move the flapper assembly to the mid-range of its travel on the direct side of the summing beam or about to the number 6 on the scale. Understand that the direct and reverse labels on this summing beam only tell us how the positioner will react to the input signal and have nothing to do with what kind of actuator the positioner is on. Don't be confused by that. Second, we'll increase our input signal to the bottom of the input range, in this case 3 PSI. Third, we'll adjust the nozzle in or out to make the needle on the output gauge sit softly on the zero pin of the output pressure gauge. Step four is to slowly increase the input pressure, but we'll watch the output pressure gauge. As soon as the output gauge needle moves, I stop the input and look at the input gauge. Ideally, it should be somewhere between three and three and a half PSI. This technique makes certain that when the input is at three,
the position or output is saturated to zero PSI and the control valve is at one end of its travel, in this case, all the way open. Now let's set the span. In step five, I'll increase the input pressure, but again, I'm watching the output pressure gauge. What I'm looking for here is saturation on the other end of the stroke. Saturation is identified when the output pressure rapidly changes and goes all the way to supply pressure. There it is. That means the valve has hit a stop and the positioner is applying full supply to, in this case, provide maximum seat load. Our goal is to make the positioner saturate just inside the upper limit of our input signal. That is, in this case, 15 PSI. So when it saturates, ideally, it should be between 14 and a half and 15 PSI. If we increase the input pressure and the output saturates just before or after our target, which is just under 15 PSI, we must move the flapper assembly to correct the span and move the saturation point. This is step six. If it saturates too soon or before 14 and a half, move the flapper assembly to a smaller number. If it saturates too late or above 15, move the flapper to a larger number. Every time you move the flapper assembly though, you must go back and reset the zero adjustment and then check the span again. When the 3582 positioner is properly calibrated, we can be sure that when the input signal is at the limits, in this case 3 and 15 PSI, we know that the valve is either wide open or in the seat with full actuator force. Once the zero and span is set correctly, don't forget to tighten up all the lock nuts. So we can calibrate the 3582 positioner in just six easy steps. Step one, move the flapper to the mid range of its travel. Step two, apply a signal equal to the bottom of the input range. Step three, adjust the nozzle to make the needle on the output gauge sit softly on the zero pin. Step four is to increase the input to find the low saturation point. The output needle should move before the input gets to three and a half. Step five, increase the input and watch for the high saturation point. Step six, adjust the flapper assembly to adjust span and to move the upper saturation point. Then re-zero and check it again. Thanks for watching.